I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is hey Everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. What's Eddie, up, buddy? What's up, bro? How you doing? I decided that uh, I'm going to dress for the show how I feel. Oh. This is what I slept in. Oh. I've done no arrangements. I brushed my teeth, but beyond that. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I'm wearing these are dirty clothes. <laughs> you always trump me. I think I'm going to come in like the shittiest and you like, yeah, I'm for you. Yeah, I've been wearing these pants for weeks. <laughs> my fucking fantasy. Let me just get this out of the way. My fantasy team has dropped four straight and I took another kick in the teeth this week. And I got to tell you, I lost my. I thought I lost all this shit. You know, like the way you feel about the Eagles? Uh-huh. I felt that way about the San Diego Chargers, where I couldn't go to work the next day sometimes when they had a bad loss. Like, I'd call out. Right. That's how stupid I was about being a fan. Right, right, right. And I think that's a working class thing. Oh. Because that's why the working class cities are the best fans, because they don't... And once San Diego left for L.A., uh-huh. it kind of... And it was around the time I, I, I had made some money. That you know, money was coming in in a way that never had before. Yeah, right, right, right. And when they left, I understood why they left as a business move overall. But it it tarnished me to be a fan again of something like all of the innocence. Oh, interesting. I yeah. was done. I'll tell you what, dude. If the Eagles had left and gone to like Camden or something like that, or or another like city, I I don't know what that would have done to me. So it's my, so crazy. Like the, uh, yeah. So think the, about that. The, so the point I was trying to make by giving the context is that I, from that moment on, stopped being a fan of things. And it saved me a ton of money, <laughs> saved me so much emotional stress, but now... You must have a little of that joy. Dude. All the joy is gone. Yeah. And now with fantasy, I thought I was over that, and I was like, oh, I'm just a level-headed fantasy player. I'm in it for the business. I'm in it to you know make a couple bucks on DraftKings, and I'm in it to mm-hmm. have brag rights over my buddies. And... I have been in a, a state of disarray. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. I'll say this. I really think your problems are stemming from <laughs> drafting a Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Yeah, I, you got to stay away from those Cowboys. They're I, bums. I wish They're emotionally bums. I could connect to that, but I can't because the guy's the highest scoring player on my team and no one else is doing Okay, I'm not going to go into the – this is not a sports show. I'm just saying that it now – that I do have some skin in the game, and I think it has something to do with, you know, you and Zach are in the league. There's a lot of, Mikey Vin from the Comedy Store in La Jolla, what up, you're in the league. It's a lot of shit talking amongst my peers, which I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, when you're getting it from all ends. Here's the thing, so this is my, yeah, last year was my first year in the thing, and you have like a lot of like a family in, yeah, yeah, in your yeah. thing, so I didn't really, there was But there's I, a lot of comedians in it too, though. And I'm shit talking now this oh, year, Oh, yeah. Like, I, I was kind of quiet last year. No, I said a couple you're things here in. and there. Now I'm shit talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm shit talking early, too. Oh, it's so early. Dude. <laughs> it's so infuriating because they're like, it's so early. Just fall off. <laughs> Just fall off a little bit, motherfucker. We were talking about this before we got on air. I was like, I cannot. I have, like, some things in the arsenal now for, like, three players in the league that I'm going to fuck them up on. <laughs> I love shit talking. It's, it's well, Okay, so this much. is interesting. Why are the this is why we stay middle like working class people we because we are so fucking dumb with tradition sometimes the fact that there's so many people I know personally that have been in fist fights at sporting events per the, just going against the opposite team's fans this is in this is like another level I get that in in England and the UK it you know Europe it's a lot worse with with their football fans. But I mean, I'll, I'll say something even more like deeper. I think it's more of a classist kind of thing. Do you think rich kids bust balls the same way that fucking no. poor kids do? They no. don't. No. Like middle class kids, lower middle class kids, they fucking ball busting. Kids, busted. lower and middle it's class fun. Kids. Yo, like rich they, kids when they bust balls when they're kids. Like I'm talking about like teenage yeah, rich yeah, kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so. It's c- it's always about things. It's so. Cunty. It's always about where it's they so vacation. Fucking yeah! It's like it's got this this better than thing yeah. that opposed to like, because um, if you don't have shit, you have to get creative about <laughs> making fun of the other guy. Yeah, dude. 
I mean, you, your mama jokes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. do you remember those as great. a kid, dude? That's why your mama great. jokes? Yeah. Oh, dude. And you got a good best. one, even if the guy didn't know your mom. Yeah. <laughs> it hurt a little bit. It doesn't even have You a- can hate your mom <laughs> and it would hurt you. <laughs> it's just getting zinged. Yeah. You're oh, just it's like, the you know, best. that's so good. <laughs> but I figured this out. The more, the more you eat up the fucking marketing. Like we, I, I'm an '80s kid. Like I was born in '81, so I am the originator of the marketing scams we see now. My era of person, and I feel like, as a lower middle class kid, I was the perfect target for toy marketing and any kind of marketing that was related to consumption. And all my family, we have shopping habits because it's a when you're lower middle class, you make enough money to get a credit card, and okay. then. You, and then you buy all the shit to try to keep up. It's a keep up with the Joneses. There is no, that term keep up with the Joneses was made for the lower middle class. And I feel like all of that stems into how we look at religion, how we look at our, our local team. I mean, any, it's everything that defines what we think we don't have in this world. See, that's interesting because I feel like I didn't really want stuff until I saw other kids have it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other kids that always got it first were the rich kids. Sure. Like, I went to school with some kids that, like, I mean, and I say rich kids, they were, like, upper middle class. Yeah, they you probably made I mean? 25000 more so than Like, their, their dads had, like, nice cars and yeah. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, My yeah, dad yeah. had a Nova. Yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? Like uh, They still lived in the neighborhood, but their house yeah, well, there were the, nice. It was another neighborhood, and oh, okay. we went to school. Like no, There was, was a, always pockets of neighborhoods. There was, like, two nice or three neighborhoods, neighborhoods that yeah. were nice within my little community, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you just knew, like, if someone lived on that street, they weren't, they probably went to your school, but... But it was, yeah, we went to the same school and stuff like that, but, like, the none of the guys that lived on my street had stuff before you know what i mean we yeah. all had stuff at the same time it was the yeah. kids that had their de- their parents like would just buy them stuff sure like i only got stuff on like my birthday yeah or like you know christmas you know what i mean like those were like that was like a salary yeah but that's <laughs> you like, know what i mean that's another... like if you get fucked on a christmas oh yeah you're like dude that i worked this whole it's it's like you the... know how many hours of overtime i put in on this seriously like yeah, a lot of my effort this year <laughs> Was dictated towards. It's like it's like a Christmas vacation. If you're not gonna give a bonus. Don't give a bonus. <laughs> but when people rely on it for their salaries, dude, one hundred percent. Like that was like okay. I put but that's the hours another in. form of keeping up with the Joneses. It's someone in your sphere that got something that you couldn't have. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I for think sure. the lower middle class. We get it from all ends. We get it from our own neighborhood because you because you are poor kids do not see. The middle class neighborhood very often lower middle class but i was are in the vicinity of I'll the middle this, class though, i wasn't like a poor kid i was well, like that's what i'm saying that's why i'm targeting the lower i'm lower middle class yeah. and i feel like we are the targets of all that because we have enough to dream of more right and we're never going to have enough to get what we want so we're always going to be buying the thing it's like those idiots that spend all that money on that new iphone because uh, they can't afford a car, they can't afford a house. It's uh, like me okay. spending money on Jordans. I can't afford any of the shit yeah, dude, that I'm supposed to have. So I got obsessed with shoes at a young age. Uh, that was the only thing uh, that I could see visibly I could get to show a status was shoes. That's why I'm obsessed with shoes. See, And I, I had holes in my shoes. Here's the thing. I The first thing, as soon as I started making money, I was like I could buy weed. Like I was see, buying weed. If I weed. had drugs, I would have done that. See, that's the, that's what that now was my put, drug. I didn't yeah. do any drugs or drink. I started. I remember getting my first job uh, washing dishes at the fucking Chinese restaurant, and yeah. I was like, oh, "Dude, I can now. I could buy an eighth. Yeah, I could buy an eighth. I could work all weekend. Yeah, <laughs> I could work twenty hours. Like my consumption washing is up dishes to, me now. to buy an eighth. Yeah, to share with my but friends. But your at least your consumption. That's why I wanted to be an adult. When I, by the time I turned ten, I knew I just wanted to be an adult. Because the the people managing me were not doing a great job. Oh, I sure. could see that very early on. Uh-huh. And I saw like what I could be doing with money if I had it. And a lot of it had to do with stuff like that. Like my consumption becomes my own. I dictate whatever those terms are. And uh, it's funny because I brought up before we started, I'm, I'm reading Ready Player One, which is a very famous book. They've already made a movie. So I, I'm late to the party. But essentially, I was saying to Ed, it's going to be the new 1984 for generations to come like it is for us. Because it really does depict a guy who's lower middle class. He's living in a project, which is just stacks and stacks and stacks of trailers, and he's in a hideaway, and he's in this oasis, which is a fucking virtual reality world, and he can make himself look 
how he wants. He could get money, which are credits through there. So he could literally, without leaving being a poor kid, he could just live in a world where uh, he has everything he would ever want. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that's kind of what that's kind of what kids from the '80s are like. It's based on a guy who's you know brought up in the '80s who becomes this like recluse and makes this whatever and. It's fucking interesting, man. I like how you said uh, it's like you know 1984 for you know, it's like our 1984. I'm like I have no, I don't ever read 1984. <laughs> well, you know how they always make the, the. I was like the Van Halen album. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm sure it was inspired by 1984, the book. <laughs> Panama. <laughs> Bro, yeah. dude, I had that was one of the first cassettes I got, dude. dude. That's a that's a banger Christ, though. That was a Christmas. You'd dude. actually that, like yeah. this book because it's about a guy who is about the guy that it centers around is a guy your age. So everything he's obsessed ready with everything. Ready player 80s, one or the ready player, no, ready player one. Okay. And it, it's about a guy who was raised in the eighties in arcades. Oh, cool. Oh. So it's about the era of he was, his favorite band was Rush. Oh dude. His favorite movie okay. was War Games. Oh shit. So it's all that shit. Uh-huh. So you would yeah, actually yeah, yeah, probably yeah. get into That's it. Cool. Anyways, the, the point I'm trying to make is I really do believe now that being a fan is the way that the fucking the way they control the masses like religions. Oh sure. Sure, sure, sure. And it's hard to buy into. I mean, it's unless you have the roots. Like I if I'm from Philly, there's no way I'm not obsessed with the fucking Eagles. There's no way I'm not obsessed. That's, that's so good. So so that's so funny. It's like it's like a religion. It's a religion. It is. It's passed down. It's a just tradition. like religion is. It's what yeah. your father was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you, a rite of passage to go to your first game, have your first beer at the game. Uh huh. You're a man now. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's it's really just tying nostalgia. It's like we're gonna give you an excuse to get together, and because you don't have anything, you don't have a fucking summer house, you don't have a cool place to go with your kids, but we're gonna make memories by sitting in front of this the dumb box, watching these guys work. When do you think that started? Do you think that was there, like gladiators, dude? I mean, that's not a joke. I mean, no, 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 but. They didn't take it like a real. They didn't treat it like a religion. They weren't like, oh, we uh, gotta learn how to fight as a religion. <clears throat> no, no, no. Or so like, I'm like the Eagles. Yeah. Like that's like my culture. Well, because you know once I mean? your gladiator like, dies, you have no one to cheer for anymore. Once he retires, mm-hmm. so you needed something that stays forever, and they could keep generating stars with. And once they figured out how to make a team. Like, like college sports is where it's at. That's like, all sports. But like back in like like the eighteen hundreds in the U.S. <laughs> baseball. Oh, uh, were they playing baseball back then? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Anything where you can get a bunch of. But that's the thing. They have this really great. That's why you still see people fucking walking around with Brooklyn Dodgers hats on, dude. They've <laughs> been gone for sixty years. Doesn't matter, yeah. right? <laughs> if, but that's what's funny is now you're going to see those things disappear as those guys die out. Yeah, yeah, be right. a new form yeah, yeah. of thing. Do you still see some like like uh, who is it? Uh, Fega was in here. He has. Yeah. He wears that Brooklyn Dodgers. Yeah, yeah, hat. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got to have some connection to the roots of that place to keep that kind of shit going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it is definitely like that religion thing. Like oh, it's it's, it's, it's totally passed oh, yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this, your politics is religion. It's all a form of tribal. Everyone wants to be a sheep. It's like Nick Saban talks about how uh, Nick Saban, the coach, he's like like. I always tell people when they first walk in to play for Alabama, he's like, just let you know, you're not programmed to work hard. You're programmed to survive. So just know that anything you think you're doing naturally isn't to get you. You have to physically try to be Uh, better. That's good. I like that. that. I mean. Yeah. Nick Saban. He's going to be. We're going to start quoting him (laughs) in memes. (laughs) Dude, when I was here four days alone, I went down this <laughs> rabbit hole. Oh, dude. I can only imagine the rabbit holes you went down, dude. I was playing. I, I played NBA Jam on my <laughs> Sega Genesis, uh, jailbroken Sega Genesis with all the games, right? And I had all the codes. And I was just fucking playing with all the different codes. And I'm thinking, man, we. I, I wish I had something to do where I could find Easter eggs. Like, how could I bring this kind of technology to my act, to my content. I mean, I would love to make, if I didn't think oh, it would be a like colossal waste eggs. of time, I would love to make content filled with Easter eggs that people have to find. Well, that's what good writing is, dude. Yeah. Right? Like layered stuff. But, like now, stuff. but now I'm counting on you to watch it when I know you're not, no yeah. one's staying on your product long enough to watch it. But YouTube, maybe. maybe our, in fact, go subscribe to our YouTube. I'm doing this now because... It's uh, Josh Cardo and Working Class Holes. Just type in Working Class Holes on YouTube and subscribe to our channel because 
We're going to be attacking the YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I just feel like you, you make something and it's just like flushing the toilet. Oh, dude, I spent time on these clips saying it fucking... That, sometimes on YouTube, I'll see a clip that... We had a clip that got like 10,000 views and then the very next clip gets one view. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I can't just, even. Don't even show me that. That's, I get nuts. <laughs> one view was that that's me? That's why when I'm thinking I about these it. great, that's the that's the thing that's killing the arts. Because I realize for myself, I have no motivation to make to put tons of effort into anything anymore. A sketch, a script, because it's like I don't have any control over where it, over where it could be seen in any realistic kind of way. And people go, well, what a same thing before like no it wasn't because i could submit it to somebody i could go do a i could go put it somewhere and it would seem like not only would the art be seen but the fact that i made it and i loved it i had a place for it but i don't feel that way anymore uh, you could still write them though i mean the writing of itself is like uh, an exercise for what the jobs that we are getting the industry's slowly coming to an end there's going to be I mean, no more you, entertainment in 10 if years. If you have things to write, though, you know what I mean? Just put them down. I feel like then it's it, a hobby. Put them down. I don't know, man. I, I want to make I want to make content. I want to make films. I want to make stuff that's thought-provoking and fun and interesting and has details. And it was carefully orchestrated. And I just feel like there is no space in the current model for that. But it's the act. It's the moments, though, I, and you have these. It's the moments, really, for me. Or yeah. that's the fucking reward. It's like when you you fucking have an idea and you you throw I used a tag. To love that so much. Throw a tag. I used something. To love that. Like so you much. were talking about it. Uh, what was that pod you were on? You were like, oh, dude, I had fucking like this many. Yeah, it this felt many great. Things. But yeah, that's yeah. like to get out of that. What I would want with the amount of work I'm putting in, it'd have to be like a an ongoing thing. This has been a stop and go relationship with my career since the pandemic hit nothing yeah. feels in rhythm or in stride uh, yeah. i mean even the podcast which this is the most for me currently the most consistent thing artistically i'm doing because i am working with very limited opportunities right now mm -hmm. and i'm creating my own mm -hmm. but when you're creating your own something else falls through the cracks it's just a whole thing you have to have those opportunities <laughs> ready to fire up it's fucking useless <laughs> it's fucking useless I'm this whole thing's useless i'm cutting the last four minutes of this <laughs> it's joking. a fucking depressing <laughs> depressing time to be in <laughs> i think you should i think listen you you yeah, you, you work. You focus on your Halloween costume with the kid. <laughs> Are you giving out candy? Are you going to do the candy at the uh, door? You know the the building we live in. They, the floor here especially knows him. And there's like a group chat. Mm -hmm. They're they're all going to do. There's like ten people or something that want him to come to the door. So oh, so uh, so there's no other kids in the building really, or uh, there's, there might be one or two. On it's a seven, bunch of kids in my building, and, and you know there's you live in like a building building. I'm in like, like a yeah. yuppie. Everyone's like 30 year old people oh, building yeah, yeah so where there's, there's like a bunch of kids and there's it. like three of us that have kids in this whole building gotcha so what are you gonna is he gonna go around a neighborhood uh yeah i think so does I, he how they they, three they now, shut the right? street down last year and we did that but in new york city it's hard because you don't know who's participating right so you can't just start walking up people's right i don't want that no so yeah, yeah, yeah. i think we're gonna just figure out what street is doing it Try to do that as we well. Were, we were, somebody asked me, "What are, are you doing for Halloween?" And I was like, "I don't know. I like. I I, I always like feel like I want to do something, and then I, the actual effort, and then I'm like, also, I don't know, I've been arrested so many times on Halloween. Oh, oh shit, <laughs> we're gonna get to that. But it's so funny you say that about. I I used to have this thing where I I'm such a fucking loner and such a loser. I never mm -hmm. got invited any kind of halloween gathering and girls were especially in like you're like i started comedy when i was 20 uh-huh and i wasn't a drinker so even when i started comedy i wasn't really close with anyone because all of them were Everybody's and i was drinking. i came oh, yeah, in, in the era where people were all oh addicts for sure yeah. so i mean i would have been much better off if i was the way i was at 30 when i was 21 anyways uh but i 
I used to get so angry because all these beautiful women, and that was my vice was women. Right. So I couldn't get in a room, and every holiday where a girl would dress sexy, I'd be so fucking pissed off because I knew I, I couldn't meet anyone. Oh, I wow. wasn't invited anywhere. Like you got to be in the room. I used to really hate it, and I lost that feeling once I had him because it was so fun to be with him on Halloween. Yeah. And I was in um, New Orleans like three years ago, and it hit me briefly for a second that old feeling because I was. Uh, watching jazz, it was Halloween Saturday night, like that big party oh, night. Oh yeah! And you know, Tulane is right there, and I saw this girl in a cat, a cat costume. She must have been like twenty one, and she had the greatest ass I've ever seen in my whole life. I oh think. wow! Wow! And it was like, it was not just that it was a great looking ass, but it was the outfit was designed to make yeah, it look great. Yeah, yeah. And the circumstances, because of the party atmosphere of all the frater- I just felt so. It her ass made me feel like a loser. That's how great her ass was. I just felt like a nothing. When it's in the costume like that too, like you know that she's highlighting it. Oh yeah, the so fact now that you know she, she knows. She know, that is uh, that is the next level yes. of like yeah yeah. yeah it yeah. was unreal. Yeah, that's that's hot. Yeah yeah yeah. And it was unbelievable. And I I just was like in my lifetime I have probably. I will say humbly, been with people on that level. Oh, sure. Right. Uh-huh. Many. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it didn't matter because it was like, but I know I can't go get that. Like, you just, you, oh, it, yeah. It's, isn't it that insane that yeah, your, yeah, my no. addictive brain works that way? Like, it's, it's the, the moment. It's, the moment is all that matters. The moment matters so much more oh, than. It's so yeah, foolish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a foolish. Sure. It's like that. I mean, that's human. I, that's everything, right? Is that why you got arrested so much on Halloween? <laughs> I, uh. <laughs> Foolishness. No, but like, even like the, I've had the best, me- like, uh, Gina and I went out for our anniversary, had an amazing meal, and on the way home, I was like, I'm going to grab a Snickers bar. <laughs> You need a little bit of that poison. Dude, I just, I had everything. I yeah. had a five course, like we it's did. Your food, it's, it's, your, it's your food. And then I was just like, orphan, right? I w- we're home and I'm like, I think I'm going to run down to the maintenance shop and buy a fucking Canada Dry ginger ale. <laughs> they got a soda machine in the shop. <laughs> Dude, in the can't basement. get me to leave my house. <laughs> I'm so happy I don't have any energy to ever leave oh, the house. Dude. Like Lauren wanted to get like a sweet thing yesterday. I'm like, you can if you want to. Because I know there's no quality bakery within a two-mile walk from It's me. always disappointing. I'd have to walk five miles. A Twix bar, it's always disappointing. It's never going to work out. It's never out. what I think it's going to be. Like, it's not a Dunkin' Donut. Donut. Uh, no. It's so Nothing. Dis- it's, it's awful. It's so a Krispy Kreme. Different the story. But that's a different story. whole different yeah. ballgame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But who but lives five minutes from one of those? I know. Fuck, dude. I'd have diabetes. Oh, yeah. You'd be done. If I, if I next oh, my week, God. Oh, my God. I'd have fucking... I was just, you have to have a dinner. Have a different intervention. I would have a foot. I was like, dude, I have to move. You might have the EGOT of interventions if you have to get the food one. <laughs> the EGOT. <laughs> fucking marijuana, crack, booze, now food. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! You have to dress up at your job. I dress at your job dressed up is the worst. Your desk job in your cubicle. I remember I've done that a number of times. Would you wear? Would you do like a little blood one on the year face? I was a, no, one year I was a Rastafarian because oh, all it was me, was yeah, the yeah, hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then right. I bombed at a. Uh, yeah, you told yeah, me that, that, that was yeah. one of the worst bombs ever. That's hilarious, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Wearing the Rastafarian <laughs> and bombing was like. Uh. But yeah, so I did that. What other one did I do? I'm trying to think. A lot of masks because you could just do it and get oh, out get out of there. This is great. But I mean, we, we've we heard your tales to Krusty. You've never heard this though. Oh, okay. Hit me. This is, this is a fucking, this is, I, I don't know. We might cut this one. Uh, so when I was. You've already talked about cutting this episode twice. It hasn't been that bad. <laughs> I, uh, when I was 10, I was a big fan of the A-team. Oh, yeah. And I decided to go, I wanted to be Mr. T. Why did I know that? There's like four other white dudes you could have been. Yeah. Murdoch, the other fucking dude. Mr. T was the fucking cool well, one. Of course dude. he was. Yeah. I mean, Murdoch was pretty legit. The old man. Is that the old man? No, Hannibal was the old Hannibal's man. Hannibal was legit. Hannibal was the old yeah. man. Murdoch was the, the was crazy a, one. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then there was Face. Uh, I mean, Mur- you track Murdoch. Sure. But Mr. T was like the fucking... So I did a... Uh, I think I know this. <laughs> I did a, like a... Instead of like How a... How old were you? A whole... Ten. <laughs> It's, so it's like 1984, 85. Uh, I do, a, a, I have like just a, a mohawk 
cap, and then I did. <laughs> my, my mom painted me up with blackface, <laughs> with mud clay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like real. We went and got real makeup. Which this is what's so crazy about it. People we were, always go too black with their blackface. So we're in the store. We're in the Halloween store. These two black women, and I'm like, I, I want to be Mr. T. Uh, I want to get the the black uh, makeup. <laughs> And these two uh, black women go, no, 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 that's too dark. Yeah. You know why? Because do- black people don't care. It's the, it's middle-aged white women that care about what you did. <laughs> it's not black people. But there's a picture of me, a little 10-year-old me in blackface with this Mr. <laughs> T outfit with all the chains. Because they're like, this kid's not racist. He yeah. loves a black character. He wants to look just Listen, like him. It was before you could know. It was before you knew the Halloween costumes were bad. I don't care. Put yeah. a white face on. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> do whatever you got to do. Do what you got to do. White, <laughs> Italian, whatever you want to do. I mean, take, they take the biggest shit on Italians now. I'm watching Tulsa King. I can't believe Terrence Winter, a great writer, a great Sopranos writer who created his own great show, Boardwalk Empire. Then he partners up with Stallone. And I don't know if it's a combination of Stallone having way too much f- artistic freedom. I would And bet, I'm sure that's a I piece of it. That's a big part of it. But also... The demo they're probably trying to appeal to is a problem because they have gotten all of these fucking Soprano rejects to play New York mob guys Mm -hmm. in pretty large roles. I mean, roles that I would fucking love to have, obviously. And the stereotypical nonsense Italian caricature is fucking out of hand. It's getting as close as if I were to put a character in one of my shows, like, hey, yo, how you motherfuckers doing? It is that yeah, level right, yeah, yeah. of stereotypical like fucking nonsense yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. giving me. A rich culture that is filled with all kinds of details that are fantastic that you could include. And these guys are walking around in track suits and everything's like, not for nothing. Oh, oh give me your guts. Like all these random sayings being thrown in. Mm-hmm, it's so mm-hmm. fucking lazy. <laughs> and it's racist. I'm going to be real. It's fucking racist. I'm offended. <laughs> Joe Colombo would not let this happen I love if he it. was alive today. Put it I that way. I love it. Uh, it's so good. Uh, what would you think of uh, The Penguin? You watching that? I'm about to. I heard Ooh. great things about it, though. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, a show that's like, they're at least connecting dots organically to the Sopranos, not a Sopranos force. You know, like it's they're doing all these kind of crossover funny references about it. That's how I got on my radar. Oh, because apparently he's a fat guy from Jersey, right? The Penguin. Uh, Well, it's the uh, it's the Batman world. Yeah, I know. But what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is they oh, they compare him to Tony Soprano at times. Oh, so that's what's been interesting There's to me. There's been some Sopranos comparisons, but I didn't realize. I but don't think organic, sh- meaning that it's a natural comparison, not forced Yeah, by I don't the think the show is no, trying to no, do No, no, that's it. what I yeah, mean, yeah, that yeah, it's yeah. actually a great yeah, show because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's drawing ties to how it makes people feel as opposed to the, the writers trying to make it something yeah, no, it's, that it's, already existed. It's, very, it's got a very like realistic kind of yeah. thing to it. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I can't wait to watch yeah, it. I'm in. We want to talk about dream jobs. Hell yeah, dream, dream jobs. So, we got all right, fifteen minutes. What's so. your What's your dream job? You know, when you brought that up, I was thinking about that, and I don't want to work. Uh, <laughs> it's so like the fucking no job is my dream office job. space. Yeah, just literally, was, what, time is my own. <laughs> yeah, but I know I would just disintegrate. I could. I'm not a guy that could sit idle and just occupy myself with meaningless things. Like everything in my day has purpose. And so far, the purpose has been something that is absolutely fruitless, which is my stand-up and film film and acting career. But, like, uh, let me ask you this. Like, if you were, because uh, you like, like. Tinkering. Tinkering. I do. So, if. Uh, but I'm not handy at all. I couldn't put together anything. But here's the thing. This is a dream job, right? Yeah. So I'm not means- trying to. De- I'm sorry. I don't. I don't mean to fuck up your yes and, but I'm trying to figure out how to classify it so I can answer the question properly. No, I don't. Okay. I, I didn't even realize I was doing a yes and. Uh- <laughs> I meant me. I should be going with you. Like, yeah. Okay. So a dream job. I'm not really helping, but I'm trying to figure out no, what but my like, parameters so, are like, before I answer. If you had all the knowledge, here's I'll, here's an example. So I'm in Ohio doing some gigs, and we're driving, and I'm driving past. I drive past this car. And it says Ohio Goose Control. And I immediately thought, wow, what a cool job. But why? Because then I'm like, is it though? 
is that a cool job? Yeah, nothing's a cool job. Or do I just wish I was someone somewhere else and that, someone else <laughs> that would enjoy a job That's like that? That's what it is. That's, That's totally what it, what it is. I, I was like, speaking. I would love to work in like a park ranger. No, no, I wouldn't. I would fucking blow my brains out. No. I would love to be someone that would enjoy that being a park their ranger. Life would be fine <laughs> and is fine and more than fine. That's their dream. The f- my dream job is to know what my dream job would be. Because <laughs> as of right now. I don't have a dream job, but I have a dream personality <laughs> I, that I would love to. That I'm there, sure would fit into any I, kind of can job. <laughs> I'm not a well-adjusted person. It just doesn't, uh, so I, I can't fit in any. Yeah, none of these jobs. You're you telling here. me I have to be somewhere every day isn't really working out for me. <laughs> I mean, as of right now, this is the closest I've ever been to any kind of dream scenario. Oh, and I'm yeah. still carrying all kinds of shit with me. Oh, dude. I'm I mis- can't catch a break. This this is this is a piece of cake. I'm fucking miserable. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that when you, you do what I'm doing right now. You'd be like, that's the dream that's job. That's the dream job. I yeah. keep crossing off dream jobs. <laughs> I got nothing left. My phone dinged all the I was like, I hope that's Josh saying he can't make it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I was setting it up and I was thinking I'd really love to just rip a bong load and read my book right now. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what's crazy is like, this is the dream job. Like laughing with my buddy and yeah. getting paid for it would be the dream job. Yeah. And at times, we're living that dream. Like there are times we've been on the road where I'm like, I would rather, I wouldn't rather be anywhere else but right now like yeah. laughing with this dude and yeah. going to, and I, we did these jokes and it worked out great. And the only thing right now that make it better is if the pay was like unbelievably good. Yeah, right. And if I felt like I had succeeded at something, it would feel great. And then I realized, <laughs> my fucking personality, I got this terrible personality I'm dealing with. I got an awful personality. I can't I'm enjoy, not liked. I, I don't can't like enjoy me. anything. <laughs> There's like two guys in the world that can stand to be around me. You're one of them. That's going to end soon. <laughs> Time is running out on that one. <laughs> That clock is ticking like this clock. <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> oh, fuck, dude. I mean, the only thing I going for is so far, I'm a pretty good dad, and I'm yeah. doing working really hard to be a present good you know dad. What? That's interesting. Maybe that's my dream job, and that's what fucking people get into, man. Like they but just I'm not like that. They give it all up, and they just like I'm a dad. That's no. who I am. Yeah, There's yeah. always the worst dads because they get too serious about everything. Mm-hmm. They take it too serious. They don't realize their kid has to live in the real world at some point without them. Right. You know, I feel like I have because of the fact that I'm miserable. I have a really good handle on being adjusted. It gives you it gives you perspective. I have so much perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that totally. no other, when I have to be around other dads, there's some great guys I've met that are, you know, my son's friends' dads. But it's very clear very soon that I have a different path. <laughs> <laughs> like these guys meet me, you could just already because Lauren tracks like I'm, you know, Lauren's like a hip mom. Like she's very. You know, she's pretty. She has, a, you know, she's well educated. She knows about stuff. And you would, when I show up, I doubt they think it's me that she's married to. Oh. I doubt it. I it's... highly doubt that they, when I show up to events, it's like, because I'm, it's usually a hurt because I'm either working, so she's always the first one everyone sees. Her derelict brother just yeah, came. Like some yeah. guy walks the, the in. The kid's uncle. I look like <laughs> shit. I'm wearing this shirt. I walk in, I start chopping it up with strangers, see if my kids acting nuts and me and them are chatting together like, oh, oh, that's. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Levon, that's Levon's dad? Levon's dad? Wow. Oh, no wonder he he doesn't bring him any places. (laughs) It's like one time we People people think you're you're Lauren's brother who just got out of jail. (laughs) like a cousin or something. He's visiting. He's visiting. Oh my god! So that's my—I don't know, man. Dream job's hard. Yeah, I don't even know. That's uh, did you had? Did you have one? No, I mean, so I, that was you were in the same place I was. Well, I, that's what I realized that it's us. It's, we got a problem. I, when I was like, oh, that sounds like a good job. I'm like, no, like, and I, I, I feel that all the time. I find I hear other people's jobs. I'm like, oh, that sounds amazing. I feel like, and then I'm like, eh, no, I wouldn't. I feel like because of Zach's age, and I bring Zach up because he was on the last episode. I feel like he could find a dream job. He's also job. our producer. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I'm, gonna, I'm dude. I'm handing. I'm handing these edits off to him. <laughs> I can't get my mind around. <laughs> You just see him sitting there editing on his fucking iPhone. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> but I feel like he could have. I feel like if he was making X amount of dollars doing this, uh -huh. he would feel satisfied for a period of time. That I couldn't feel right now because I'm old. I like guess. I don't think Zach's different from us. I just think Zach's. At a different point in the fucking he's just younger. chronological order of he's life, just younger. he's just younger. Yeah, I yeah. feel like he could find a dream well, job a, a lot quicker. I wish the, he was here. There was a period of time where, like, I got you know, I was a drug addict, yeah. and then I got I lost an amazing job because of like being a drug addict, and then I got clean, and then I got that job back. I got one for you. Then let's let's do this uh -huh. instead of dream job, dream era. Go. Ooh. So far, the life you led, what? Would you have wanted to have in what era of your life to make Ooh. it like the ultimate? You could have been dead because of it, but if you had those things in that moment. Oh, wow. The first thing I go to is like uh, this hostess when I was uh, a busboy. Yeah. Um, I kind of blew it with her, I, but she was like into me. I this guess is I was working like working class shit. How low I was like nineteen. I went. Ni I was nineteen. She was so hot. She was probably. I, maybe I was 20. She was 19. And, uh, yeah, dude, I fucked it up, man. Isn't I, it great, though, that this is what's great about being lower middle class or lower working class people? We're attached to things that are tangible. Love, sex, drink, environment, because that's, like, what we could create. Like, your uh -huh. dream era starts uh -huh. with, what if I would have handled... What, what if My I would dream girl right? I would have been better. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, she was so into me, and then I got blackout drunk and pissed myself. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know that would be <laughs> the foresight of the rest of my life. <laughs> she, she did. She wasn't into that. You know. But, yeah, isn't it funny how the minute I was, I was never a blackout drunk, but now that I look back after all this like work I'm doing with my alcoholism, I'm remembering moments differently now. Oh, and yeah, yeah. remembering when I had that first one too many drink and how someone who was having so much fun with me yeah how they just changed yeah and i'm just thinking oh, i wonder what happened they got uptight <laughs> <laughs> uptight was my yeah, word yeah, yeah. why is everybody right why is everybody it, so uptight. uptight yeah yeah <laughs> meanwhile i'm just it couldn't be around me <laughs> no you just you just I'm screaming. No, I'm uncomfortable. No volume control. <laughs> it's it's, it's annoyed. Yeah. yeah. Uptight. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm just, in, I absolutely don't want to be around. You're obnoxious. Everybody's so uptight. So, uh, that was always my go to. So, my dream, are you done with your dream era? Yeah, yeah. My dream era would have been 30 years old, access to the Playboy Mansion. Oh. Passed at the comedy store and touring with. One of my one of my favorite comedians. That's oh. my dream era. Oh, I didn't realize that's what we were well, doing. Well, that's dream era because I, oh, I had I was oh, okay. I was at L the L A Comedy Store a lot still. Oh yeah, I was going back and forth from here to there. Right. I was young still. Uh -huh. Everything seemed like it was in front of me. Uh huh. And there were times that I could have been invited to the Playboy Mansion. Wow. So imagine like huh. those times I was invited and could have gone. Wow. Now my dream era is I was a sex addict. I was a f alcoholic. Uh -huh. I definitely at that point would have been into drugs if I had access to good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have burned that bitch down. Yep. And that was the height of the Playboy Mansion yeah, where yeah, no yeah. one was getting in trouble. Yeah. That was wow. like that fucking Jerry Buss era. Yeah, like Bill Maher was hanging out there all the time. Yeah, right? all the like scumbags a, yeah. that you thought were cool then. Yep. The young, the, when they were young scumbags. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's quite an era. And then you were, t and then you're like, because I remember like you certain you take comedians. That over I'm not dating a hostess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at a hula hands. I've always thought bigger than you, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> there hasn't been many hostess I haven't dated. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember, I can't name. I'll tell you off air, but I remember being at the Laugh Factory, and two. I mean. Relative, I mean, they're famous amongst comedians, but by no means are they like A-listers. But they came walking in with two fucking absolute drop-dead gorgeous women. Like from the Playboy Mansion? Well, so one of we're on this, we're, one of them's getting ready to go up, and I'm in the back with him. And he's like, he's like, yeah, we're uh, 
you know, blah, blah. And I just came to our spots because we're going back to the Playboy Mansion. That's who, that's where we met our friends. And I was like, that's awesome. Yeah, 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 right. You're like, you're, they're, they're ugly too. They weren't like handsome. Right. And but the fact that they had access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because apparently in the Playboy Mansion from people I've been there is that's, like. You're like, you're like, dude, this is, I'm le- doing, uh, this is where I want to be. This is everything is going in the right direction. It's like, this is yeah. where, this is the next stop on the Josh train. Yeah. Is this booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those two will be for me. I'm not including this other ugly. Uh, ugly guy is not allowed. It's me and these two women yeah. at this booth. That was going to be my life. And I remember thinking that. And then the guy was telling me like, yeah, you have to go when it's a not a promoted night. Like a night where it was half a lie. Like half allows people to come in. Because they actually used to rent the mansion out to make money. Oh. And they would just supply it with escorts. Those and are, you're yeah, like. Yeah, that's not the same so thing. So that's, that's like. A yeah. brothel. I could go yeah. to any brothel. Strip, I want to go to the play. Like I want to go to a movie yeah, night. Like, yeah, right. I want to be invited to the movie night. I want to be invited to the grotto where only a handful of people are invited because what happens then is the women and the men and the people that do show up, it turns in now to more of a sex club vibe where you have a choice on who you sleep with. I mean, obviously, Bill Cosby drugged people to sleep with him there, but overall, it was about mostly about consent I, from what I've been told Bill Cosby was drugging people at the Playboy Mansion oh yeah he was notorious oh wow yeah, he would hang out there all the time Ugh. but that's kind of like the bi- that's like the Epstein Diddy shit is Diddy was using a lot of his spaces similar to that but he was just like drugging people without their knowledge and passing them around to the party goers Ugh. yeah that's so fucked up but from what I've been told by the people who've been you know, LA the, people I knew that went there a lot during the eighties, nineties, and Rangers the early two thousands was, was, was not as like yeah, yeah, seedy. Yeah, 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 right. It was more consensual. Everything was. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they yeah. obviously when you have a bunch of naked, beautiful women walking around and ugly rich dudes, they're gonna do something shitty. Yeah, there was. Yeah, they're gonna treat people shitty. Right. Yeah. But uh, that would be my dream. My dream. <laughs> 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 that arrow, you could still treat people <laughs> shitty. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com for tour dates. We have our first big gig uh, of the season. We're in our busy season right now. <laughs> it's my busy season. And that gig is Tapped Apple in Rhode Island, Westerly, Rhode Island. Tickets are on sale right now. As you hear it, it's going to be this Saturday, November 2nd. It's going to be me and Eddie, and we're coming to you, Rhode Island. So be there for us. Yes, get tickets for that. Go to Ed McGowan uh, Comedy on Instagram. Go to edmcgowan.com to see uh, my city dates. Email us at workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 